is how to talk about aloneness, which doesn't sound nice in the beginning, you know, aloneness. But aloneness, if you think of it in terms of sweet solitude, it's a very sweet thing. If the ego looks at aloneness, it's all about pain, loneliness, not having any love. But aloneness in the spiritual sense, from the soul standpoint, is a very, very sweet thing. Let's think about how aloneness can be very sweet for us. First of all, if you've got a project to do and you really need a lot of space to get this valuable project done, then you go somewhere alone, you know that people love you back home, but you've taken this space and time. For example, writing a book, coming up with an invention, uh, finishing some sort of a management project. So if you need lots of concentration, you basically make space for yourself, get some alone time together and get a major project done. Other times, when you're trying to make a major decision, like immigration, proposing to someone for marriage, um, separation, uh, changing professions, you know, at the junction point of major decisions, alone time is very necessary. Other times you just want to be able to listen to your heart and your body. Sometimes your body is trying to tell you something. If you're getting a lot of backaches within a period of two months and nobody can figure it out, just take some alone time in nature somewhere and let this body talk to you. Because the body and the heart have a, a silent language. You've got to make some space for them to talk to you. Other times you want to celebrate a, a victory. You know, you've gone through a very intense period. You accomplished something very difficult. And now you just want to unwind. Like these, uh, you know, like a championship tennis player. Once the tennis match is over, they just want to kind of melt inward and release all the stress. So celebration of victory done during alone time is very useful. Uh, other times, you just want to ask yourself, you know, you take two days by yourself and you just ask yourself, where am I going? Am I happy with where I'm going? Which parts of life am I stuck in? Why am I stuck? Is my heart closed? Why is my heart closed? How can I open my heart? Am I hanging on to something from years ago? And then creativity. In alone time, if you do it right, creativity starts to bubble up. For authors, for painters, for sculptors, artists often crave alone time, sweet solitude. Obviously for meditation, yoga, any practice of spirituality, alone time is very, very important. What are some practices to create alone time? You know this, you can get into a car if you love driving and just drive without a particular destination. Uh, me and my significant partner, we took a drive in the southwest area of the US for three weeks. Just open highway and a lot of things come up a lot of creativity for me and then uh, you know the drive or a walk in nature some people a sailboat you know they get on a sailboat and create alone time uh, creative writing and journaling when you journal you're actually taking yourself on a journey because all of your emotions are coming through the pen onto the paper. Very, very healing. Even if you're not a, a writer, get used to getting your emotions into the pen and onto the paper. Somehow I find using a pen on paper is just more natural than getting behind a keyboard to pour out your emotions. The, I find the electronics interferes. But if you have a pen and paper, which is made out of trees, somehow it makes it more natural than, you know, transferring electronic signals from a keyboard onto Microsoft Word. 
So driving, taking a walk, um, journaling, prayer. Alone time is also a good time to miss people that you love. You know, we think if we're alone, then uh, my husband or my wife is not here. So how can I appreciate the people who love me? But that's exactly the point. If you really love somebody, sometimes you take a couple of days to miss them on purpose. I think it's very romantic to be away from your significant other and to miss them. Missing somebody, I think, is, is very spiritual and it's very romantic. Actually, in the hectic life, we don't have time to miss the people that we love so much. And then, gratitude. In alone time, you can not only miss your loved ones, but express gratitude during sweet solitude about how much you're getting from the people who give you a lot of love. Therefore, sweet solitude can be used for making important decisions like immigration, change of profession, uh, change of partners. It can be used for gratitude. It can be used to celebrate victories. It can be used for huge projects. So you make space and spend three days totally focused on a huge project. And then other times, uh, alone time is used to mourn. If you're in love with your grandmother and she passes away, you don't feel like talking it out with your friends. She was too close to you. The only thing that will do the trick is for you to spend some alone time. You're not really feeling sorry for yourself. You need that time to mourn this grandmother. It's actually, you know, when there's deep, deep love, a mourning is very spiritual when you mourn somebody that close to you. Of course, in the beginning, there could be a lot of sorrow and grief and some feeling, feeling sorry for oneself. But a deep mourning, when you're saying goodbye to the body of somebody, not their soul, uh, that requires some alone time. I personally don't think it's so great for all the friends to rush over to your home when you've lost your grandmother, because you don't have time to be with her. I wish you some sweet alone time, whatever you wind up doing.